The taste of frog is really very much like chicken. This is just one about getting over the initial shock. It's this like little thing that makes a ribbit sound and hops around. Franken Foods Marco Bano. Today is the second part uh, of a two part vlog I'm doing about telling the world about all the weird and wonderful foods we like to consume. Ditos Filipinas. First, let me tell you where does Franken food come from. The reference, of course, is to Frankenstein's monster, a literary reference. This is uh, the idea of a lot of corpses being stitched together, nuts, bolts, you know, electric probes coming together to form a monster. And Franken foods is the culinary equivalent of that stuff that makes you kind of scared or react or say, ee, ee. Mm. And I'm gonna give you my very objective criteria for how they got onto this list, right? This is my Kadiri factor. So Kadiri means kind of gross, disgusting, or that e sound in Filipino. That's Kadiri. So my Kadiri factor, or ik factor, you might say in English. I'll give you a one to 10 score on how Kadiri this food is. So the first one I'm gonna to talk to you about today is Asosena. So what is Asosena? This comes from Aso, which means dog and cena, which is uh, Spanish for dinner, so kind of like dog that became your dinner. It's dog meat. You know, buy and sell of dog meat is common in a number of areas in the Philippines, places like Kalinga and uh, the Ifugao region. Now, a few other facts about Asocena. Firstly, it's often served in cooler months, in cooler areas, like higher altitude areas of the Philippines, because dog meat is said to raise the body's internal temperature, so you're feeling very cold. It's apparently a good meat to eat. I haven't proven this. I'm not sure if there's a sign scientific basis or not for dog meat like warming the body but that's a traditionally held view. It's also often consumed at morning ceremonies so uh, a wake of somebody's passed away that it might be on the table. In the Philippines the killing or maltreatment of dogs is actually outlawed but in a lot of more remote parts of the Philippines dogs are still widely consumed. Apparently the going price for a dog in the Philippines is about 120 pesos. That would be a pretty cheap form of meat here so you can also understand that it's probably one that would be consumed and certainly in times of economic economic crisis and hardship, I know this is a meat that would be consumed a lot more often. Certainly I was in Indonesia during the monetary crisis in the late 1990s and that was a period where all the dogs in the streets of Jakarta vanished. You know, people doing it hard and looking for whatever protein they can get, suddenly dog meat becomes a much more palatable option. And I don't know where I stand on this one, I mean I, dogs are like being domesticated, they're very happy pets for a lot of people, right, who couldn't imagine eating a dog. And I feel partly that as well, because I've had dogs before, grew up with dogs around me and you know, I really love them as an animal. And the other hand I'm like how much does a dog really differ from a cow or a sheep or a pig and why as humans do we kind of say that eating one is okay and eating one we find a bit of a taboo or a bit unusual so for that reason I would say this one's only going to be like a four on my Kadiri factor okay so the next one I'm going to talk to you about today is helmet so helmet, okay, that sounds like motorbike helmet. It's not any of those. It's a crispy grilled chicken head. So you take the head of the chicken, you put it on a stick, you grill it. It's like a very common thing with Filipino food. Put it on a stick, grill it, eat it for merienda. Now this is another one that the origins of helmet were people in, in poor urban environments during uh, the 1970s in the Philippines, which was not a great time for the Philippine economy, looking for additional sources of food and protein that were cheap. And at that point, yeah, you've eaten the chicken meat, you've boiled it into a broth, or you've used every part of the chicken and accept the head, okay, well now we're gonna start using the head because people are hungry and how do we find a way to make eating the chicken head more palatable and that was like a lot of things, you know, grill, uh, it's easy to grill something up, dip it in enough, salsa on, vinegar base and everything starts to taste pretty good. Yeah, have I eaten this before? Yeah, tastes like just really, really crunchy chicken. If you've eaten prawn heads that have been grilled or fried, it's very similar. There's just a crunch there. It actually is very, very in, an intense flavor, you know, in the same way a fish head, a prawn head, a lot of the flavor is actually in the head and those are the parts usually used to make a stop. So when you eat it, it's just kind of, you're getting through this very, very crunchy texture, but a surprisingly flavorsome taste is in your mouth while you're doing it. So for me, I mean, yeah, it is eating the head of an animal. So I'm gonna say it's a six on my Kadiri factor. It's another one you gotta try if you come out here. Okay, so what I love about all of these Franken food in the Philippines is the Pinoy's ability to, you know, give it a really cool name that kind of makes you smile or laugh. And following on from Helmet is of course Adidas. 
I don't know what the shoe company thinks of this, but you know, we're talking about chicken feet. Who knows what Adidas is thinking about their brand being like misappropriated to represent eating chicken feet here in the Philippines. But this similar origins to helmet, okay, we're gonna take the head of the chicken and put it on a stick and grill it. Well, let's take the feet of the chicken and put it on a stick and grill it. I don't know which I prefer out of the two. I think chicken feet, you tend to kind of munch and chew all the skin and tiny bits of flesh that are still on the chicken foot and you're not like just smashing bones the way you are with, with a helmet. So I probably would prefer chicken feet. I think it's a little bit more widely eaten. So probably this one just like a four on the Kadiri factor. Okay, so Adidas, it's not your shoes. Try it out next time you're in the Philippines and let's get on to the next one. Okay, so the next one is Tamilok. Or in English, that's known as woodworm or shipworm, which is a kind of oyster-like wormy mollusk that typically inhabits coastal tree trunks. It can be up to one to two feet in length, which is, is huge. And it's this sort of like jelly-like slimy worm that will be sort of chopped up and is usually prepared into kinilau. Now, kinilau, if you're, if you're not aware, is the Philippine answer to ceviche. So it's a cold cooked using vinegar and uh, uh, citric acid, to, usually from calamansi, to kind of cold cook or, or cold poach seafoods right so that's how that one is actually typically prepared and eaten and you know frankly the taste is pretty good I mean I think that this one is just getting your head around the fact that it looks like a disgusting worm that's an understandable reaction but if you like oysters if you like mussels which I totally love eating this should be absolutely no problem especially if it's kind of been cut up into something that looks a bit more just like meaty chunks it's healthy very taste of the sea kind of flavor and for me this is pretty low on the ick factor so I'm just giving this one like a, a two on the kadiri factor and my last Filipino you know, Franken food that I want to share with you all today is palaka. Palaka, of course, means frog, so no surprise what this consists of. It's literally you go out to the cane fields, you get a frog, and usually after it rains, all the frogs are out, and kids from the Philippine village will go out and collect the frogs, put them in a container, and then that's dinner in rural areas of the Philippines. So quite widely eaten here, and it's cooked in a number of ways. So like everything, you can make it adobo. It can also be made into tinola. It can just be straight up fried, or fried up with a little bit of more sauteed in a pan with some ground pork, which imparts a more porky flavor, but to the frog meat and perhaps with a few vegetables, snake beans, for example. So try it out, taste-wise, protein-wise. I think I'll give this one just like a three on the Kadiri factor. I'd be happy to uh, eat palaka all day. Okay, Mga Cabano, so that is the second part of my definitive guide to Filipino Franken foods out there. I hope you got a lot out of watching this today. If I missed anything, I do want you to leave a comment below, or if you want to add some more facts to how Filipinos created and enjoyed so many weird and wonderful culinary treasures. Love hearing from you guys. And of course, keep in touch with the show. There's subscribe link here or here, press somewhere on the screen and you can subscribe and never miss another episode of Food and Fun in the Philippines with me, Chris Urbano. I will see you guys all next time. Bye now.